Welcome to the Creepin' It Real Show, your one-stop shop for weird news, spooky, and otherworldly and paranormal shenanigans. We'll take a dive into what's going on in creepy pop culture. You can follow Creepin' It Real Show on Twitter at creepin' underscore it. You can email us at creepinitrealshow at gmail.com. You can also go to our website, creepinitrealshow.com. Without further ado, welcome to this week's episode. Welcome to our show, Creepers. We are recording on Super Bowl Sunday, so whatever ends up happening later today, welcome to that. Uh, I am one of your hosts. This is Miss Moni, and I am here with Mr. Yardley. Say hey. Hey, what's up? Everything's all good here in Atlanta. And Miss Christy. Hello, everybody. Uh, happy to be here and excited about my good crockpot goodiness for the Super Bowl, even though I'm not really give two shits about either team that's playing. So, good times. <laughs> <laughs> here, here. Hey, you know what? Something that I have to commend both of you on when we were speaking in the pre-chat, both of you have your Super Bowl prep already in line, and I'm kind of late to the game. Hopefully, I've got to go out and get something before uh, 6 o'clock Eastern. But uh, definitely big ups and congrats on getting that headache out of the way yesterday. I'm kind of um, shocked because I know how you are all about good food and it being going along with the theme and everything. So maybe your head's already in New Orleans and you just hadn't figured out the whole Super Bowl thing yet. But I'm pretty shocked. Maybe I was just fucked up and <laughs> couldn't drive to go get anything. Uh -oh. else. <laughs> That was pretty much the the crux of it. I just got a little too slayed too early. You need to get you need to get up on that. Out. You need to get up on that Amazon Fresh, where you can oh, just order everything. That's the worst and they... subject. They uh -oh. stopped delivering over Christmas, and now I don't get that anymore. And I have to pay eight dollars to have anything delivered, like on top of just paying for my groceries. So boo on them, but whatever. I've never had it, <laughs> but I have friends that do, and I'm totally oh. jealous. It was amazing because even even getting the regular grocery delivery, even for paying the eight bucks, you can't do it like while you're at work because they don't pack it. You know, like Amazon Fresh, they would pack it so it would last all day sitting on your doorstep. That yeah. is not the case anymore. So boo on them. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> boo. So this is episode 20, and I called it Let's Go to the Winchester, which, of course, hopefully Creepers will recognize as a shout out to Shaun of the Dead. Because we have to keep calm, take car, go to mom's, kill Philip, sorry, grab Liz, go to the Winchester, have a nice cold pint, and wait for this all to blow over. So that is the yes. theme of the episode, which, uh, in my opinion, and to jump the gun a little, is a much better movie than the one that we'll be discussing soon. But at any rate, <laughs> we're going to start with some weird news. And Miss Christy, you have one about UFOs being real? Uh, possibly, yeah. They did this week a conference, uh, I can't remember the name of it, oh, the STARS Academy in Arts and Science. So basically, a giant group of people that used to work for the government are now coming together to create uh, aerial technology that they say they obtained from people that do not live here. <laughs> and one of the guys that's heading the program literally quit the Department of Defense two weeks before s joining this group. So he's not some old fuddy-duddy that, you know, came up later, years later saying, aliens are real. Uh, so he's joining in on this group, and he used to actually work with the U.S. Army also as well as as well as National Counterintelligence, Director of National Intelligence, Director of National Programs, Special Management. He's been very, very highly involved in the government and especially the Department of Defense. And when he got his new job, the Department of Defense sent him on with the highest accolades that you could give somebody. So he's clearly not a quack. And he says that pretty soon actual real evidence of UFOs will be released and we're not talking about you know the grainy sh weird okay is that a plate is it a hubcap is that a cigar type photos like legitimate photos of their technology and everything should be released at some point so this should be interesting if that's true 
Hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, as far as I'm concerned, if something like that is released, it's going to be released in the context of something else. Like something else big is going down and they're going to have to explain how they're able to have certain technologies to kind of counteract a certain threat. But these are the types of things that I listen to and I just say, you know, I'll believe it when I see it. I, I just don't know. We've been down this road a lot so with many certain times. people. Yeah. yeah so sure. at, at this point, you know, show me something. I think the reason why they're saying all this is they're claiming that they're going to start making things that will affect humans' everyday life as well as whatever technology for flying that is going to be also built. So I think what they're saying is that they're going to release these photos because they're going to start coming out with some stuff that, you know, shouldn't be possible is what the basically the gist of what they're getting into so nice well i want to believe finally finally getting me that flying car man yeah (laughs) well the thing about this is if technology like this comes out i feel like it'll either be on the militarized side or it's going to be some technology that's going to benefit like people who are above our pay grades you you know what i mean so for me if you're going to show me new technology let me know show me the technology that's going to benefit everyone you know what i'm saying as opposed to you know it's like medicine or anything else you know if you got the bread you're going to have access to things and i don't want to be sitting here saying man it's so cool that (laughs) they are able to get this you know this newfangled technology so hopefully but i I don't really have any trust in it hopefully whatever kind of technology comes out is something that benefits us as a whole i just don't see people putting out technology that's not going to enrich other people and shorten you know give other people the short end of the stick so yeah uh, my faith in humanity isn't too high but <laughs> you know what uh you know what bring it on we'll see well hey trump we'll... needs to make his soda button work that much more efficiently exactly. okay he needs to be able to press it and get it like zoomed into the room immediately without a human hand touching it so that's true because poison uh, need this technology <laughs> well let's get back to doing big things so hopefully yeah. uh, that's something right. happens Lou, right. the guy, the guy who is like we were just discussing, uh, says that the aliens do not exhibit over hostility, uh, but something unexplained is always assumed to be a potential threat until we can ser- be certain that it's not. On the bright side, I believe we are closer than ever before in understanding how their technology operates. So, hmm. interesting. And Maybe it's see. not for us to understand, though. Maybe we're just supposed to, like, benefit from it. I don't know. Possibly. But at any rate, tell me about 93,000 pounds of Mardi Gras beads, Mr. Yardley. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, everybody. A lot of people are probably aware, but for those who aren't, you know, Mardi Gras season is upon us. And the end of last year, there was a, you know, it's not really new for New Orleans to get you know, a lot of rain and for there to be flooding in certain parts um, in and around New Orleans and around, um, you know, Louisiana in general. But after the flooding that was at the end of last year, the mayor of New Orleans had ordered that all the drains in the city get a good cleaning. And so we all know, you know, if you've ever been to New Orleans or, you know, in the quarter or anything like that, or just anywhere probably within a mile and a half, or two or two miles of you know where a lot of stuff goes down you know that there's a lot of trash and i have to commend new orleans and their cleanup crews as some of the best on earth of cleaning up after people you know after these parades but when they went in the drains they found ninety three thousand pounds of mardi gras beads that is a lot of beads and yeah. and just think those are the beads that are just in the drain so the beads that are on the street uh that the cleaning crews get up you know that's thousands of pounds you know in itself but i was just thinking as a person who kind of frequents new orleans i could just imagine like the filth and the gunk that were on oh. those fucking beats yeah <laughs> I, I just I, you had to like clear that out with a hazmat suit on you know what i'm saying <laughs> so i'm happy there weren't any pictures included in this but that is a lot of party beats mm-hmm. like i'm kind of shocked in it. <laughs> i'm shocked because you know, when we were at, in Mardi Gras a couple of years ago, and it's my first time I had ever been there, 
and I didn't see a lot of beads just laying around. You know, everybody was fighting over them, so I'm kind of shocked that that many pounds of beads got away from people that were trying to get them because it's major deal to get beads. And then I want to know, were there any of the good ones that have, like, the medallions on them because those are the treasured <laughs> ones that you want to keep. So, <laughs> Well, one of the reasons why you didn't see that, you know, we stayed away from the quarter in yeah. a lot of those areas because That's those true. are the super touristy you know, areas like we had our strategic things that we could do the parades and all of that. But, you know, you don't really unless you're new to New Orleans, most people try to go to Bourbon Street. Anybody who's lives in New Orleans or has been to New Orleans more than a few times knows that you stay the hell away. <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? From that area. And I guarantee like a lot of that congestion was probably, you know, you know, in the quarter because, yeah. you know, during Mardi Gras, it's literally shoulder to shoulder on those streets. Oh. So, you know, I, I can understand that, but uh, big ups to them. And I'm pretty sure we'll do a good job of putting 93,000 more pounds. <laughs> and it's starting Go for 95, a nice round yeah. number this year. Absolutely. <laughs> now, Yardley, also, you have posted a picture of something that uh. I can even see. <laughs> and, you know, at first, you know, it's 8 a.m. here in California, and I'm like, Oh, breakfast burrito. And that is not that is not a fucking breakfast burrito. Please tell me about what you have here. <laughs> With this this tapeworm. Are you there? Yeah. I'm oh. sorry, I was on mute actually. <laughs> and I started talking. You, but... you were speechless over this. Yeah, I had yeah. kudos to you, Yardley, because I looked at that and I was like, Oh, he even gave us a picture. How lovely. <laughs> I kind of regret that. That is actually the actual (laughs) picture. But a man pulled a five and a half foot tapeworm out of his body and he pretty much blamed, um, you know, his intense sushi habit on it. And what the ladies are referring to is I included a picture of the actual tapeworm and the toilet paper roll that the guy used to roll it around and the actual paper bag, I mean, plastic bag that he put it in. To show the doctor, and, and a if big you look at that, hair. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was going to yeah. bring up. Yeah. The big, the big hair is oh. like the worst. But apparently, this guy, you know, um, he was just complaining of stomach pains and things like that. And a doctor, his name is Doctor Bond, and he was actually on a medical podcast, and they were talking about different. Um, experiences that they've had, you know, kind of weird things or weird cases that they've had where they had to deal with um, some of their, you know, some of their patients. But apparently at, at one point he was dealing with a patient, he had a bag that had a toilet paper roll and the guy was saying that this tapeworm was, you know, coming out of his body um, when uh. he was using the restroom. And he, <laughs> it's funny when you're reading his account, he was basically saying that he was crying. He thought he was going to die. And he thought that his insides were coming out. Yeah. And I'm just sitting here looking at this picture and, and just imagining like this guy being on the toilet and seeing this thing coming out and you just get a, you know what I mean? Like, did he like use the toilet paper roll to roll it up while it was coming out or <laughs> did it come out and he grabbed it and then he rolled it, it around the toilet like paper? Baby. Oh. It looks like he it. just kind of twined it out of there or, or whatever. But the tapeworm in itself looks so nasty and the little black dots that are going through its stomach. Uh-huh. But he, they was essentially saying that what we already know, the CDC tells us all the time, and I think if you've ever had a mama, she would tell you as well, you know, you, you're supposed to cook your fish and, you know, your meats till they're done. Reason being is you don't want to get any, you know, sits or tapeworms oh. and things like this. But one thing of note is the CDC said that Alaskan salmon <clears throat> has the potential to have this Japanese tapeworm. They were initially thinking oh. that this particular tapeworm was only you know in asia but apparently a lot of alaskan salmon so i you know i love my sushi but that's one of the reasons why i can't eat it a lot is i'm like man you know what if i'm that (laughs) one person you know (laughs) that would get like the you know the sister to tapeworm in it files level stuff coming out while you're on the toilet yeah Yeah, it's just it's not good i I definitely uh, i probably shouldn't have put that picture in but i kind (laughs) of it's all right you You had had to. to We always get, you know, the fear of God putting us about oysters, but I hadn't really heard this kind of threat for our sushi. So now I'm just bucking the system every turn because if I go out and eat, it's usually going to have oysters or sushi in it. 
<laughs> oh, so I don't eat fish or sushi, and everybody here is like, you need to do that. But I have a former boss who's a Swedish man, and he knew a doctor, and everything there, you know, is like super fresh fish, like whatever. And the doctor, he asked the doctor, like, what's the what's the secret to long life and longevity? And the doctor's only advice was, don't eat fish. Really? So, yeah. There's Let's be healthy for, for your heart. <laughs> Heart yeah, healthy. but I guess because of all of the, well, not just tapeworm, but, um, oh, I can't think of it now, but like the stuff that builds mercury and stuff like that, mm-hmm. you know, that you can get, he just said, don't eat fish. So, well, isn't that yeah. one of the, one of the things, the benefits of using wasabi is that it kind of helps to knock down bacteria and things like that as well. Or I thought that mm. I had read that somewhere, uh, but I don't know, I, but I, I don't, <laughs> I don't really, when I eat sushi, I don't necessarily you know, dip it in soy sauce. I do it rarely, but I don't really dip it in soy sauce or put wasabi on it. I just really like to taste whatever the fish is, Mm -hmm. you know, that I'm eating at the particular time. Now, on occasion, if something, you know, if I try something and it's not palatable, palatable, I might use a little wasabi, but maybe I need to start using that more. However, I don't eat sushi every day, but when I do, I go in. Yeah, (laughs) me too. I don't always eat sushi, but when I do, there's tapeworm. (laughs) (laughs) So, (laughs) moving on from the not breakfast burrito. Yeah. uh, What to watch this weekend? I thought this would be kind of fun to just share anything that we had enjoyed this week that we had watched. And I watched Happy Death Day. And I just wanted to say, I thought this movie must have been a marketing nightmare for the studio, whomever had to actually really, like, peddle this, because... They marketed it like it was a a slasher film. And while there is a masked killer running around trying to kill the girl, well, succeeding in killing the girl, um, there's also a lot of humor in it. There is mostly it's a mystery story. But I know like for this day and age, it's a mystery story kind of marketed to a 20 something audience. And like it seems like it would be hard to sell exactly what it is. And so they sold it as a, a slasher and I remember back when it came out, a bunch of teens and 20-something-year-olds went to see it, and they were like, this movie wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't just a slasher film. So I just want to put it out there and say it's available to rent or to get digitally, and it's really actually entertaining. Um, it stars Jessica Roth, and she's really cute, and she does a really good job. She pretty much carries the whole film because it's contingent on her. And we actually watched it on Groundhog Day which was kind of fun because the premise is she keeps reliving her own murder over and over again until she can solve who killed her. And I don't want to give away much more than that because to say much more would be to kind of give some clues, but it, it unravels very nicely as a, as a mystery. And when you think you've solved it, you haven't. Yeah. I had so, no idea the ending. We were like, me and my daughter watched it and we were like, Oh wow. Did not see that coming at all. So I agree. Yeah. It was really, oh, so I thought it was, to see it. Oh yeah. We watched cool. it a couple of weeks ago and, um, we really, I really enjoyed it. I was pleasantly and happily surprised. I wanted it to be good cause I thought the trailer was interesting, but you just never know. Apparently, especially now when we're watching trailers, my, my, uh, my faith in trailers is starting to wean a little bit. But um, anyway, yes, this was a great movie. I would definitely... Was it what you expected? Did you expect a, a, thr- a, a bleh, slasher or horror? Um, I think it, you know, it, as far as I'm concerned, because I'm not a big slasher fan, it had that in it. And it was horror because, I mean, she dies every way possible you can. And they're not exactly... <laughs> um, they They do give a little quite a bit of detail about that they're not just disappearing you know when she's dying and it literally happens the entire movie she dies over and over and over again Mm -hmm. in all different ways while she's trying to figure out who's trying to kill her and so I it's definitely a horror it's definitely got mystery for sure because you don't know who the killer is but I think pretty much any horror if it's not Halloween or Friday the 13th you don't know who the killer is so I would classify it as that for sure it but it's you're right it has a lot more it's almost like groundhog day mixed with uh i don't know yeah i mean a groundhog day horror film and again without giving too much away did you love the homage to pretty in pink that they did 
Was yes. it pretty and pink with the yeah with the cupcake? Yeah, yes. that was really cute. <laughs> yeah. um, so I have recommendations from both of you here, uh, Christy. What is it that you're watching that you want to recommend? So I. When you put this down here as a choice, uh, I did go back and look at all the movies that I've seen recently. Uh, not very many good ones. I'm really hoping that 2018 can produce some better indie um, horror because from what I've seen, I'm not really impressed, which is sucks because usually you get some really good indie horrors uh, these days. So I decided instead of a movie, I would recommend a show that you can binge for the weekend if you're really not going for well I guess this is going to be shown or posted after the Super Bowl but next weekend if you're bored and you want to binge watch a show um, I always talk about Paranormal Witness and how much I love it and there's another one out there that's not up to exactly its standards but it's good some of the episodes I'm like eh but a majority of them are pretty entertaining and creepy and it's called My Haunted House and I believe it's on the ID channel, but I'm not positive. Sometimes I think they take shows that have already been on other channels and repeat them there. So it might not be uh, firsthand from that channel, but it is. it does get shown on there. And then, of course, if you have uh, a way to watch it whenever you want, you can uh, Comcast or whatever. But anyway, it's good. And, nice. um, it is also, yeah, Destination America. That's the one, not ID. ID is all the murder. Destination America. I watch ID and Destination America all the time, so I get them all confused. But, um, yeah, it's basically has two stories each episode. It's an hour long, and they're just basically telling their stories about whatever crazy, creepy experiences they've had. Some of it is ghosts some of it is crazy things in the woods or aliens or whatever but um it does mostly of course rotate around haunted houses nice that's always my uh, favorite kind of thing yeah mr Yardley, you're stuff. not currently well, watching anything well you know what for me i didn't watch anything new but i yeah. actually went back and finished i watched something that was old and i went back and finished something that i didn't and it was actually something that we were speaking on a few podcasts ago when we were talking about black mirror season four so i finally this week went back and finished the the black museum mm-hmm. and uh, yeah i grab probably say that was probably one of my top episodes i'll put it up there with crocodile for me so I'm, I'm kind of late you know, on the boat with that. But I went back and saw that and return of the living dead. And I have to say when the pendulum swings back, when I get back from uh, new Orleans and it comes back to me, I definitely got to, you know, we've got to go back in time and just go ahead and review uh, return of the living dead. Because even though I consider myself uh, an old head and it kind of resonates with me because I was, you know, young when it came out back then, I know that there might be a lot of people who might be under 30, who might not have seen it. And mm-hmm. if they listen to the show, we want to let you know how tragically, awesomely horrible goodness that this movie, uh, <laughs> you know, provides. Yeah. But but that's really about it. Um, I'm definitely going to have to check out some of the uh, some of the shows and things that both of you have recommended. But for me, I kind of stayed in the past and uh, I'm proud of it. That's, Very you, can, nice. you cannot go wrong with um, Night of the Living Dead, Day of the Dead, no. old Mm-mm. school. I mean, they literally formed zombie as we know it. And unfortunately, it seems like zombie seems to be evolving into more like a uh, sci-fi type situation and not yeah. staying true to its roots. So that's a shame, but you can't go wrong with that at all. That's a great recommendation. No. Well, here's the thing, do either of you still or both of you still tracking because you know the Walking Dead, the other half is gonna be at the end of this month, and then um, I think what else? There's something else that comes out this month. Uh, well, n- next month you'll have the TV series The Terror that yeah. we talked about uh, in the totally last gonna watch episode. The terror. Yeah, oh, I yeah. haven't been I, I haven't been tracking uh, you know 
The Walking Dead necessarily as must see TV, but is that I'm something still that either it. of you? Okay, so are yeah. you excited about? But, no, I mean half? it's like being dragged behind a truck. You know, it was like my favorite truck to ride inside of, but then they dropped me out of it at some point, and I'm just like dragging along behind it. <laughs> it's yeah. painful. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I dropped like I can't it. Let go. <laughs> I dropped it uh, when they, I think when they were getting on the bus to go to Washington or whatever. I just, mm. I lost interest. That was seasons ago, and it was one of my favorites, too. I absolutely loved it, but they just, after a certain amount of time, kind of lost me, and I get tired of the human monsters always being the, the showcase. I want to see a mixture. I don't want to just see he, bad yeah. people. I want to see zombies. It's it's a zombie show. <laughs> Give me some zombies. Yeah. Give me it's, some good zombie yeah. deaths and stuff. I so think, I think that they're kind of stingy. They're probably well, you know, they're they're kind of tied around the belt uh, with, with that budget. And to be honest with you, there are people who are on that show like deny at this point. I'm like, girl, you know, she's in Black Panther. She's in all mm-hmm. these other theater things. I'm like, that show's beneath you, girl. Get out of there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like seriously, because anybody who goes to see Black, I'm pretty sure. I haven't seen the movie yet, but I'm going to go see it open at night. Or, at, But I have to admit, I'm pretty sure that people who see her in this movie and then you go back and watch her in The Walking Dead, you're like, oh, that's a total downgrade. Like, I, you yeah. know, why? Yeah. Why are you still doing it? But I'm not excited. I'm not excited about it either. And it's not musty TV. But yesterday, I think I, I took a look at the what is it? The second half trailer uh, mm-hmm. premiere trailer. And uh There wasn't really anything that made me say, oh, my God, I have to see it. But um, I guess what I'll do through secondhand knowledge, I'll I'll just hear the things that happen. And if something sounds awesome, I'll go back and watch that episode. Well, I haven't I haven't seen any of it, but I did see a couple of um, trailers or just quick previews of The Walking Dead. And there's supposed to be a pretty substantially big death coming, which I know. I don't know if y'all know who it is. I don't want to spoil it if you don't, because if you're watching it, it's not. But um, that they were previewing as a don't watch this unless you want to be, you know, have something spoiled. Or maybe that's already happened and it was because I don't know. But the one of the main characters dying. Just say who it is. Carl? Spoilers, spoilers. Carl. Oh, yeah. He's gotten, he got bitten um, yeah. at the end of the last, well, we found out he was bitten at the end of the last episode. So, yes, he's going to die. He's done. So. Carl. Yeah. Carl. Coral. <laughs> Coral. Coral. Coral, don't <laughs> die. Um, re- also, really quick, I did watch a movie last night. It's not horror, but I watched it for the second time because I kind of forgot what it was about. I knew it was about aliens, but I couldn't really remember the whole premises is Arrival and it's a pretty solid science fiction movie from last year. All the other ones that are in the, the genre of sci-fi that I like were garbage. So I was pleasantly surprised. It was good. I love Amy Adams. I think she's absolutely as cute as a button and I just want to boop her on the nose every time I see her. <laughs> and she played a really great scientist, and uh, Jeremy Renner, I think his name is, was yeah. her counterpart. And she's a ling- ling- linguinist, linguinist, lingu- linguist, linguist, linguist. Thank you. <laughs> How do you say that this early in the morning? Which it's not early, but whatever. Um, so it's kind of, she's not really like a scientist or anything, but she gets pulled into trying to communicate with aliens that have come on Earth and trying to keep us from a possible war with them because, you know, um, not just Americans, but humans are all about shooting things up and uh, thinking everything wants to kill us. So anyway, it was a a solid for science fiction, I I think. I don't know what you guys think if you've seen it, but so it's I would recommend it, too. I need to watch it again. I sort of did my parent falling asleep shit which i've heard it's really good because <laughs> joe watched it and was like wow you need to watch this so i liked the the concept at the end when she does finally learn to speak their language what it does to her and then at the end of the movie you're like what just happened holy shit because it's really not the movie's not what it seems so it, it was yeah, good yeah. it was a great ending so anyway nice. recommended all right. Well, I'm going to move us forward. Well, quickly with a callback from last week, we were talking about the Strangers sequel, Pray at Night. Mm-hmm. 
And I mentioned that it was inspi- might have been inspired. It sounded a lot like some murders that I had heard about. And so I did already post the link this morning to our Facebook page. But it, it sounds a lot like the Ketty murders, which is still a, a still unsolved murders. Uh, quadruple homicide that occurred in Ketty, California in 1981, which from what we can tell of the trailer, it looks like it might take place in the 80s. Mm-hmm. And this is uh, a 36-year-old mother and her children which again, this looks like what the trailer is, is, um, Oh, the pretty lady. What's her face anyway, is the mom. And then mm-hmm. she has her kids with her in this trailer. And, uh, essentially you can read about it again on the link that I posted, but they were found. A couple of them were found killed. A couple of them lived. And so far it has never been solved. I think one tell, it happened in cabin 28, which has since been demolished uh, as of last year. But I'm just curious, you know, if this really is inspired by that, if they're going to have any reference to cabin 28 in the film, that mm. would be a kind of a cool way to pay homage to this unsolved crime that happened. It's a really eerie, you know, it's one of those middle of the night, nobody heard anything, even though there was people kind of around. So kind of a cool thing that you'll have to see they have a composite mm-hmm. sketch of who they think might have done it and it's, it's a pretty creepy sketch because they've got like glasses on i don't know they yeah. kind of look like characters <laughs> no pretty. thank you so there's that if you're interested in mirror dares which i always am but um here we go into let's go to the winchester mm-hmm, mm-hmm. we have <laughs> So let's go ahead and rip the Band-Aid off. We intentionally didn't talk about we being... So Yardley didn't get a chance to see the movie. Uh, sounds like... Yeah, he'll he'll tell us that in just a second. And Christy did, and I think her and my opinions vary on it. So let's hear Yardley's story first. What happened, mister? <laughs> well, no, it, it was just... You know, I just... <laughs> let's just say I got ahead of myself. I had an opportunity to see it a couple of things didn't work out with my movie pass or whatever. I think what happened was I checked in like an hour or so before. And for some reason it just kept saying pending. I think I should have just checked in at the box office. Uh You know what I mean? But I checked in, went and did something else for like an hour or so. And then I came back and for some reason it was frozen up as pending. I think the problem was I didn't just immediately check in and then just go through. So it just didn't work out and I didn't have an opportunity to see it the next day. But I did read and I also listened to a couple of of reviews on the movie. I'm not going to say what those reviews were because I'm pretty (laughs) sure listening to you, both of you earlier, um, I'm pretty sure that you're probably in the same ballpark as those reviews, but I really did want to check it out because I had a couple of hours um, earlier in the week. But um, you know, it That's didn't cool. work out. But I don't really feel like after uh, you're not going to be losing seeing... sleep over it, eh? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I yeah. don't feel like I really dropped the ball. But at the time, I was upset. It was cold as hell, and it wasn't working. You know what I mean? And I was Aww. like, oh shit. But anyway, I guess uh, you know, I got an opportunity to eat some tacos instead. <laughs> that that sounds like a better decision than this. So, Miss Christie, just before we get into what it's all about, did you overall did you like the film? I liked it. I didn't <laughs> love it, but right. I liked it, and I'll explain why whenever it's my turn. But I I liked it in the <laughs> Paranormal Witness, my haunted house venue of like, not for a movie. It wasn't right. movie quality, unfortunately. So, yeah, but... I'd say we liked it in a beneath Helen Mirren's yes. capacity sort of way. Although she did what she could with what she had. I don't know right. quite what you would have done. I'm shocked that she took this role. Maybe she's just ready for something fun and not taking herself so seriously anymore, which, well, really, she never was. She just always had brilliant things, but... Um, she, I thought the whole morning thing was a little over the top. It was it was too too over the top for me. It wasn't I? She, this woman wasn't really like this. It wasn't, and I'm okay with people changing things of that aren't you know factual. But she was quite uh, social, Sarah Winchester. She wasn't mm-hmm. a morning wearing a veil over her face. Uh constantly being 
afraid. She had parties at her house. She was not like this. So it was, I was expecting a little bit more personality from her and just, they just kind of made her brooding and I don't know, I guess they're trying to make her mysterious or something. It just didn't fit for me. Yeah. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So Dr. Eric Price played by someone that I love. Let me get his name. He's adorable. Played by Jason Clark, who was Mm -hmm. in Zero Dark Thirty and many other things. Um, He is an opium and and hooker. We see him with all kinds of whores, addict. Um, And he is hired to come in and determine if Sarah Winchester is mentally fit to run her company. So he's hired by her board, basically. And he gets to the house and she's having none of his bullshit, which, you know, she's like, are you, do you, are you an opium, opium addict? Are you an alcoholic? And he's like, nah. And so she confiscates all his shit and says, I'm not going to be honest with you if you're not going to be honest with me. So Mm -hmm. we do have this kind of interesting setup here where we have someone who is struggling with withdrawal from his opium and alcohol. And so is he really seeing some of the quick cheap you know jump scares that they're throwing at us with him seeing ghosts in his mirror and shit like that is he really seeing that or is this a symptom of his withdrawal so in the meantime yeah (laughs) jump in anytime uh, if you have comments or questions Yardley (laughs) well well you know what one of the things that this might kind of go and coincide with what Christy was saying earlier but one of my draws to actually going to see this movie was Helen Mirren so Uh For me, um, having not actually seen the movie, I'm right. wondering, you know, I, I, writers and directors kind of, you know, have a long way to go as far as, you know, kind of pushing an actor in a certain direction. But for either of you, was Helen Mirren's performance at least decent for what she got or was it oh, just... Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, she was good. Like, I she thought was at good. first... I thought at first, too, like, the setup here at this point, I was like she's being a badass like she's like she's not letting him off the hook she's shown that she's done her research on his life because Mm -hmm. it's revealed that she knows about his dead wife ruby who we know has gone um insane but we don't know exactly what happened but it turns out he carries he being dr price carries a refurbished bullet of course winchester bullet that has shot him and he was dead for two minutes um before his wife turned the gun on herself and died and so he's kind of haunted by the memory of not being able to save his wife as a psychologist and and her being mentally ill but was she or was she actually haunted by ghosts or whatever the hell but yeah as far as helen mirren i i thought christy whatever you think at at this point super feminist it's like yeah. i am not mentally ill i know the facts about you i know the facts about my company i don't really care if they take it away from me this is what i'm doing with my life and by the yeah. way this is my fucking house and i'm gonna take away your opium and you're not gonna have access to wander around my house anymore and declare me unfit so like badass what yeah, did you think she was, about that she was definitely a strong a strong woman for that time and of course she took charge like you said so i yeah i mean she was strong i mean the woman character was strong i just didn't think that it was accurate to how the real sarah it's just really hard when you're playing a character based on somebody who actually existed and people were are always going to judge that and that's not her fault she's simply doing what she's directed to do and she did great that i mean she played her part very well right so we have our second session of therapy or whatever where he's interviewing sarah and he asks her why there's always construction around the house and she explains the history of the mansion and that her husband was a gun manufacturer and that his guns caused all the deaths and that he died of tuberculosis and that their infant daughter, Annie, died at six weeks old. And all this is true. Um, and that she believes her house is haunted by the ghosts of those who died at the hands of the Winchester or the hands and died by the Winchester bullets. Um, she has the rooms built around the mansion to be designed as the same rooms that the, in which the victims died, which I don't think that's true. I know she designed the rooms, you know, from supposedly from talking to ghosts. I don't know, whatever she, 
But she, in the movie, she seals the door, each door, with 13 nails to keep mm-hmm. them from haunting the rest of the mansion. First of all, historically, that's bullshit. Second of all, uh, did you get a bad 13 ghost knockoff? Yeah, I, I can figure out why that just was weird. It, they're ghosts. They, I mean, I'm you sorry. Lock the door. <laughs> you ain't like... locking no ghost into a room. I'm sorry, but that it's just not doesn't a happen. Thing. Like, yeah. And, and let me just say that when she's mentioned to him that he had died, and he said, yeah, that he had died for two minutes, and she said, so that means that you can see ghosts. You can see, yeah. you know, you're, you're blurred um, from reality, not reality, but life and death, and you can see the dead. I immediately knew which this is a spoiler that he was going to be seeing people in the house that were dead. Like that yeah. you're going to, that you think that are supposed to be looking like they are not dead. And then there's going to be a surprise. I didn't, wasn't really sure. And I knew the person that was dead was dead, but I didn't know quite to the capacity of what was going to be going on. So we'll move right, on right. with that later. But anyway, so by then I knew, okay, people are going to be walking around that are dead and he's not going to realize that they're dead. He's going to think they're just people that live in this house. So I had already kind of gotten to that point by now, but again, I wasn't full, full on knowing what was going to happen. Well, and so, yeah, I think too, now we're in the middle of a mystery that we don't really care that we're in the middle of because it just hasn't built in a way that we're like, Ooh, we care to solve this mystery is just like you're just being led by the nose from from a pretty thin plot so far and i did miss one part and it speaks to what what we're getting to um you know sarah has him confined to his room and there are two butlers watching his door now here's your first clue though is these two butlers don't really interact with one another at all and And one of them is clearly looks creepy (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've got the creepy face. You've got What's the up? Tri- got creepy, all typical face. stereotype creepy looking guy. <laughs> Come on. Right. I mean, can't we just have nor That's just such a giveaway and it's just insulting <laughs> to me. I don't want people to look creepy who are creepy. I want the- it to be creepy, yeah. that that's not what life is. I mean, you don't see a serial killer walking around and know immediately, oh, he's a serial killer. That's just not how life is. So it really irritates me that they're constantly doing this on tv shows and movies making the creepy making the bad person look creepy but they did and they did at any rate so he's in his room and he's confined but he's like i'm gonna just sneak out this window and i'm gonna open this window with a little bit of some sound and nobody's gonna notice and i'm gonna go out onto the roof and check out the construction that's going on around the clock at the winchester excuse me mystery house and just in time, of course, to see, um, so when Sarah Winchester's ne- uh, niece lives there and don't care very much about her character. I'll ask you guys about that in a minute, but, um, her, her, the niece's son, Henry, super ginger kid has yeah. a bag over his head and starts to walk off of a window ledge and apparently nobody else sees this. So that's when I was wondering, I'm like, is this really happening? Is he a ghost? What the fuck is going on? But Price catches him so he doesn't die, like, jumping out of the window. Okay, and... first of all, is it possible not to get severely injured when a 60-pound kid falls on you from, like, two or three stories? <laughs> That's my yeah, question. I don't, I don't I'm like, that would kill <laughs> you. Seriously. Yardly. If you catch a kid <laughs> from a second floor or third floor, I don't remember how many stories up he was. Uh, would that, wouldn't that, don't you think you'd get like a broken rib or something? I mean, seriously. You would probably, you'd probably definitely strain your back, I, I guess. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. I that, mean, that's, the kid that's a lot of fell weight. on him, fell on him. He didn't like, no, just. walk it off. Get up and yeah. walk it off. That's <laughs> like, yeah, really? I, I don't think it's possible. Cause I, I try to think of, you know, I was boxing up some books, right. In like mm-hmm. a, I don't know. It was like a. I want to say like 14 by something box, but I filled it up and it was about 45 pounds yeah. and it was a beast. 
like to just kind of to keep lugging those boxes of books around. So I could only imagine a 60 pound uneven just lump of weight <laughs> just banging falling on you, right on now. you from the second yeah. floor. Yeah. Or maybe those are just old people problems. You know, maybe if I was 20 something, I could take that lick and keep on going. But right now I'm out for the count. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I, I can tell you, I wouldn't be just hopping up and dusting myself off and being like, that's right, I'm a hero. No, still good, I'd be still like, good. wheel my ass to the hospital. Well, and we've got this burlap sack gag that we've yeah. seen twice now in the movie. Once at the very beginning where the same creepy redheaded Henry kid is like walking around in a burlap sack. And then the second time where he goes off the window ledge in a burlap sack. And we'll see more about that in just a minute. Because in Act 2, we find out that the young butler, who nobody but the main character, Dr. Price, has ever interacted with, was the ghost the whole time. Because, of course, Dr. Price sees dead people! Mm -hmm. Yay! So, it turns out that this creepy-ass-looking butler is Benjamin Block, whose brothers were killed by the Winchester rifles back in the day. And at some point, he put a burlap fucking sack over his head and walks in into the Winchester like uh, museum. It's a yeah. showroom, yeah, where right. you go in and look at the guns, yeah. Right. And with a Winchester and shoots up a bunch of armed men who come in to like kill him and he of course gets gunned down by a Winchester. So I don't know okay, first of all, back in the day, Winchester rifles were not the most accurate because they just weren't made the way that they are now. Second of all Putting a burlap fucking sack on your head without cutting any holes is not going to increase your accuracy. Mm -mm. And third of all, you're not, it's not a robbery. It's not a situation where you're planning on coming out alive. So you're not trying to like cover up who you are. The burlap sack was a hundred percent just some kind of movie trope to make you like, ooh, how creepy, scary. He has a sack over his head. It was so stupid. Am I the only one that feels that way? Yeah, no, I agree. And I thought it was even <laughs> dumber that the kid was walking around with a sack. On I, I just that make no sense. Where did the kid me. get a sack? Like, okay, I you're gonna know. go sleepwalking and walk off a ledge, feasible, but you're gonna go sleepwalking while your mom's still asleep. Go w around the house to find a sack first. Did the ghost bring you a sack? What the fuck is actually happening right now? Like, I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I was. <laughs> I was not, it, it didn't interest me at all. I did, Henry could have fallen and he was annoying and he didn't really even need to be in the movie at all. Like no point at him all. Or his mom. And she was yeah, trying to be like, yeah. I am the mom. I am your protector. I am your hero. And yeah, anyway, so. And then now I'm going to fall asleep and you're going to jump that's off. That's act two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all good. And it went super full insidious. Okay. Because insidious, the first movie. I was telling you guys just last week how I liked that movie up until the scene where they end up in like the ghost dimension and the ghost becomes super physical and yeah. the kid is like in some creepy, it's supposed to be like kind of like a hell type of place, but he's next to a furnace and all the light is red. They do the same thing with the redheaded kid that we don't care about and his mom and they're in some kind of like furnace of the house and all the creepy ghosts have escaped mm. from their 13 ghosts. Um, I mean, Winchester house rooms. Oh, because the earthquake hit. Which this is this is historically accurate. So of course they cheesily in this movie timed the San Francisco earthquake did hit and destroy a third of the mansion, and so uh, ironically just happens to let all of the scary ghosts out of their their thirteen uh, nailed in doors, and so the ghosts are wandering around and they go to attack the niece and the little boy that we don't care about, and it looks just like a scene from Insidious, yeah. and the mom is going to stand there and stand up for her kid with no weapons at all and she can't even see them and it's just like why is this happening but in the meantime on a different floor the benjamin block guy is like beating the crap out of poor sarah winchester and then you know price of course figures out that if he puts the refurbished winchester bullet that shot him and his wife that only should have significance to him and his wife into a Winchester rifle and shoot the ghost with it. How the fuck do you shoot a ghost? They're not a physical thing. I don't even know. Then it's going to save everybody. So he does it. And just when all the, all the rifles in the room are aimed at him, then he shoots the ghost and all the rifles fall down and it's super anticlimactic and everything comes to an end and everybody's fine. And the end, like, I don't, yeah. I don't uh, have... 
I also, <laughs> I also, I gotta say, when they were so at the beginning focused on his dead wife, I was like, oh, you know, she's coming back at some point. So then you yeah. had the reconciliation because Sarah Winchester, everybody, every spirit would give her like a a dr- rough a rough draft of the room that they wanted they created. Wanted yeah. So she had created a garden room and it of course foreshadowing at the beginning of the movie is he's at his house, the doctor, and he's always hanging out in this garden room and that was his wife's dead wife's favorite room. So you see a garden room at the Winchester um mansion and it has it's sealed with its 13 so you know, of course, she's in there. Now, come on, let's be real. That is a dead giveaway that his wife's in there because you know his wife's going to show up. She's dead. And we can't have this movie without his demons coming back to haunt him. No. So, but she ends up, of course, being somewhat of a helper and forcing him to see the ghosts and deal with them. And then she disappears and says, don't, please, like, don't blame forgiven. yourself don't for my, yeah. Yourself. Yeah, so it but was... But it's like, what are the odds, too, that he would be called by the... Not by Sarah Winchester herself or by the creepy ghost butler or somebody, but by the the board for the Winchester estate to come, you know, be involved. And, and why would they call someone who had been shot by a Winchester rifle? No, I feel like they, there's bias right no, there. No, she, she chose it. They said that later, that I'm she so chose her doctor... That was okay. when he showed up there. She chose him, and she said she chose him because he had okay. been shot by a well, Winchester least that rifle. A coincidence. Yeah. It was just like, you're a part of this house. And I was like, what are the fucking odds that you're going to get someone who was killed by a Winchester rifle coming in to evaluate Sarah Winchester? Like, okay. Got yeah, it. no, she chose him. Remember, the, her, her niece said, my aunt chose you. You're on my aunt's payroll. She chose her own doctor. This, you're the one that she chose. The, the board didn't choose you of course but the board was pressuring him to give them the crazy result because they wanted her kick her out of the whole thing to begin with but you know it was over it was way over the top cheesy and it just didn't have the scares that i was hoping for uh there was a few times that it got me uh, a few little things i did jump um it was cheap all of it was cheap i jumped a few times but it was yeah cheap jump scares they didn't build to anything intelligent with what they had they seemed to have enough budget they had a great cast like setting tone they had everything going for them they just wrote a shitty story yeah mm. it, it was that, that's what i was more or less uh curious about i'm like man you know you it seems like you have all the pieces in place and did the you know everything comes out of the writing and kind of set up. So I think from what I had saw in the other reviews, that's what people were disappointed about the most was that they didn't think that the writing necessarily lived up to the actors and the, the resources that they had. But before we get out of here, I definitely have to ask, you know, you Moni seems really lukewarm on it. Chris, you seem like you think it was, you know, it was all right. But if you had to pick one thing, what was your major highlight um, in this movie? Uh, what about you, Moni? I would say the acting and the actors, um, because really with almost any other material, this would have been a great movie. And it was kind of like we talked about Woman in Black last week, where it just it had all the elements and it just didn't deliver. And Did I feel we? Like I don't remember that. I'm just kidding. We, we mentioned it last week. <laughs> um, I know. I think I'm, in, in reference joking. to this about how yeah. it had that gothic tone. It has yeah. the time period that we like. It had Daniel Radcliffe. It had everything going, but it just doesn't deliver. And, you know, this even more so was just, it was thin. And I just feel like if you could get a different script writer, like different screenplay, you could have everything be super awesome with this one. Yeah, I I can agree with you on that. And I also really liked um, the they did a great job with the set. Like the the house was immaculate. It was beautiful. They did a good job cre- recreating and it was rich and I pleasing to the eyes. It was a good all the everything was there to make it a good movie. And then it just wasn't. And that's what really sucks. You've got great acting. You've got um, the set is amazing. Uh, the period's great. You, c- 
could have been really clever that they incorporated the earthquake, but they didn't make it clever. It was they had so many great elements and then just t epically failed at them, and that's what mm -hmm. sucks about it. And it literally is to me. It should have just been a a TV show. It should have been a TV movie. It wasn't movie quality at all. No, no, and you know it just. I don't even know what else to say. I was I was excited to see this one, and it's. I feel like we could write them a sequel and have them all the same actors and just say try again, guys. Like yeah. have the same setting, have the same idea, but just do it different. But I think that you know you have so many of the typical scares, and that's what this was. There was nothing out of the ordinary i mean you know when he's like rotating the mirror back and the forth, mirror you know something's yes. gonna happen and that's just Absolutely. such a typical and of course they just prolonged it where yeah instead of one mirror turn and you see a scary face it was, it was like, like four five or yeah. yeah and then all of a sudden there's it's like you know it's coming i mean come on it just it wasn't still made me original. jump but it was like well, i was sure. laughing too because i was like i know i'm gonna jump in a second yeah. You know? yeah you know this is coming you know when he's rotating a mirror around mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. some shit's gonna go down and then but the rest of it when the guy exposes himself as a ghost and he's a mm -hmm. really pissed off ghost i just wasn't feeling like a ghost would be like a demon sure or something you yes. know i was thinking it's like a demon Thank you for or saying that yes i, I, I just wasn't I was like, feeling like the beef yeah, yeah. it was because their guy and i had already occurred his brothers had been killed so sad and then he killed a bunch of people and himself like i could see him wanting to return to the house and have his room built or whatever the fuck if that's what we're going with but after that like where's the beef there the eye yeah. for an eye had already occurred why are we continuing to like be so awful you know yeah he was pissed and i get it but i didn't get why i mean all those ghosts were pissed why was he all of a sudden this main angry beast it just wasn't yes. making sense to me i kept thinking like all those unhappy ghosts drew a demon which would make more sense so mm -hmm. uh, that part of it and why the fuck was the guy dressed as the butler like what was the point of that he's a sneaky ghost okay but, I mean, why? You know? You're feeling it, just... it was like Scooby-Doo, too, when, when yes. Dr. Price was sneaking out and he was just, like, raggy? Like, yeah. where are you? Like, <laughs> on the roof? Like, what's yeah. going on? Yeah, Ugh. I was very yeah. disappointed. Um, it would have been a great TV movie, but not yeah. a, not a, not a go out pay blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. I mean, so you know, what I would took... you rate it, Christy? Out of five stars? Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be generous and give it a two. Wow, that's generous. Yeah, I'd give it a yeah. two and a half. <laughs> yeah. Yardley, are you going to bother to rent it now? Like, or will you, will you watch no, it next week? No? I'll definitely check. I'll check it out. But man, yeah. y'all are even, I mean, <laughs> you know, IMDb gave it a five. And, uh... And I'm just kind of looking at some of the other ratings, but ten, man, yeah. I, I would have thought that uh, Christy might have gave it a three and a half or something or three, but uh, I, I'm going to hold my nose and watch it. We'll, we'll see. I, I think that's and like, <laughs> like Moni said, it. when you're spending $13 a ticket, I mean, we went yeah. to the studio. I always say Movio Studio Grill. I don't know why, but I can't like quite get my brain wrapped around that, that phrase, but I took Madeline to the studio movie grill and you don't just spend money on, t I mean, we ate dinner, I had drinks, she had a, you know, her soda and it was a shit, $60 night. Jesus. And yeah. not for that. No, I don't want to watch. write Helen Mirren personally and be like, I want my 60 bucks yeah. back, bitch. You're feel, usually awesome. Like <laughs> I feel bad for her because... I don't know who roped her into this. Like I said, maybe she just has zero fucks to give and is just enjoying herself now and wants to do something fun. And this seemed like a good idea, but uh, I am really bummed that this because you, we just need more good horror. You know, it's just mm -hmm. hard. And I know it's hard to make a horror movie. I can't even imagine how hard it is. But you but, have an actual probably haunted house and like yeah. a whole history of actually probably haunted stories behind it. Like, how can you not make this work? Yeah, I agree. Or don't agree. try. Like, stop. <laughs> I think my rating is harsh because of my disappointment. 
Like if I was yeah. looking at it coming from a more um, unbiased, unbi- kind of... yeah, just a little bit less of an expectation, I probably would be. Um, some yeah, I've read the reviews after I got back, and some people loved it. Mm-hmm. So I think it's just who you know, depending on who you are, what, how you're going to rate it. But I was, uh, I didn't, I wasn't pissed when I walked out. But no, when I, when but I, the more I thought about it, the yeah. more, like, annoyed I got with it, too. Because once think... I was done with the jump scares and the visual, the eye candy of the actual yeah. house and all those things, I was just like, that movie was super dumb. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I think when I sat down and had to, you know, actually sit down and think about what I was going to say as a reviewer, it mm-hmm, my mm-hmm. perception got more negative because... I had to go back and really reflect on it and think, okay, I mean, I knew when I walked out of there, I wasn't like thrilled with it. But now when I really go back and think about it and I have to put two and two together on some of this shit and I'm like, this, that was ridiculous. Come on. You know, I mean, well, let's be honest. I would, I would count it as a few grades under insidious for me. And you know how I feel yeah. about insidious. So. <laughs> That's... Well, I saw it with a couple of girlfriends too, and so that helped because we came out and spent a couple minutes talking about it. Yeah. Um, and that helped me form kind of like I was like, I don't like what I just saw, but I haven't really like had a concrete reason yet mm-hmm. to think about that. And so we talked it out together a little bit. And then also, um, yeah, as I wrote out this the show notes for today, especially because Yardley hadn't seen it, so I made sure to write a summary you know, that would kind of give someone the gist of the movie. And the more that I started writing, I don't know if you guys noticed, like the snarkier I got about like, oh, and then the butler turns out to be <laughs> yeah. a dead person. Oh, shocking. Like, yeah. you know. Well, and I, so like the, you... the more I wrote, the more I was like, God damn it, this was dumb. Like, <laughs> did you get the impression at the end that there's going to be a part two? I did. Ugh. Well, maybe now when they see the reviews, they'll say, we're not going to pay someone as awesome as Helen Mirren the kind of Helen Mirren money she gets to do some shit again like this. Yeah. So, but it is the number one movie at the box office I this weekend. I was just getting ready that to con- ask if anybody looked. Yeah. If that continues, they will do another one. Because of course that's how they I- will. So, I do plan on, by the way, I mentioned it last week, but the same girlfriends that went to the movies with me were the ones that graduated. We graduated from San Jose State University with our master's, and we never set foot on the campus, and so even for graduation ceremonies. So we kind of have always wanted to go anyway to there, and of course the Winchester um, mansion is not far from there. And so I do think that this year we will go do a road trip and see the house and probably have a more interesting story to report back for this podcast than this movie story. So <laughs> forward to that. Good. <laughs> that would be epic if you could go see yeah. that. I would love, I wish I could fly over and watch it, go with you. You should come with I'll us. Try. I will think? definitely try for sure. That would be awesome. Yeah, totally. So on that note, I just want to talk a little bit about next week, give some spoilers so we can all go on to, uh, especially poor Yardley having to go to the grocery store on the busiest grocery <laughs> store day of the year <laughs> to get oh, his yes. Super Bowl food for today. But um, so as we mentioned a couple times, Yardley is going to Mardi Gras and yay for him, but boo for us. He won't be on the podcast next week. So that's a sad story, but we will have a special guest and it is a, another man who is a skeptic. So at least we'll be bringing some of the balance to what we do mm-hmm. here and we don't have an exact topic. It will not be a movie review. So for those of you who listen for movie and TV show reviews, sorry, but we are going to explore the rest of what's creepy in the world a little bit more. And yeah, that's all we know for sure right now. You're not going to say who it is? You, do you want me? Okay, yeah, well, it's going to be... It's going to be Mr. Joe Barrett, my husband, Mr. Moni Barrett. So he <laughs> can stop He can stop screaming at the podcast. I was going to say, I will, actually I will participate. Say, <laughs> him participating came out of the other day we were talking about, ah, New Mutants. Yeah. And I was saying, oh, in the podcast we were talking about New Mutants. And sorry, dude, but that show, that movie looks like it's going to suck. And he was like, why do you say that? And I told him about, you know, it getting pushed back to 2019 and how that doesn't bode well for a film. And he was just like, when did you get this news from? Cite your source and everything. He's like, how how, how um, relevant is this? And blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he's always like this and skeptic with everything. And finally, I was just like, 
dude, you have something you want to say. You need to get your ass on the podcast and say it yourself. He's like, fine, I will, which he's never agreed to before. And so before he could back out and be all like, no, no, it's your show. It's fine. I was like, I'm texting Christy right now. And I'm going to tell her that you're on the show for next week when Yardley's gone. He was like, fine, do it. I'm like, good, I will. So yeah, she texted me and she's right. like, hey, can uh, when Yardley doesn't come on, well, she, no, she asked me what subject we were doing next week. And I'm like, whichever one Yardley chooses. And she's like, duh, Yardley's not going to be there. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> And she asked if Joe could come on. I go, well, whatever Joe wants to talk about then, I guess, since he's going to be replacing Yardley because I ain't choosing that. It's whoever steps Not in his shoes. Not replacing, just substituting. There is yes. no replacement. No way. But no how. At any rate, yes, he is. I think we'll see how excited he remains as it actually gets closer to it because he's going to have to put his money where his mouth is. Yep. Uh, I think he, I think whatever we bring up that we believe in, he's just going to shit on no matter what the topic is. But it's we cool will see me. how it goes. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a fun list. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you guys are doing Airport. that. I couldn't bring Rick on here ever. He First of all, he doesn't give a shit about anything except sports and technology, so he'd be so out of his element. He would <laughs> and he would blatantly be an asshole just just to give you just to give a shit because that's his life purpose for me and that's my life purpose for him. So yeah. it would be it wouldn't go bode very well for us after the show. <laughs> oh, he's like I'm going to bring my science brain with me and 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 be skeptical and I'm like Bitch, I have a master's in sci- in a science degree. Like, why do you get to have a science brain just because I believe in shit? Like, yeah. what? <laughs> anyway, this should be fun. Barrett v. Barrett. But, uh, and Mr. Yardley will be having fun uh, contributing to the 93,000 pounds of beads down the drain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Don't do anything I wouldn't do down there, Yardley. <laughs> He's right, going to be I'll the one that. hollering for beads. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be fun though. I look Have forward fun. to it, and I also That's look forward awesome. to, to to listening uh, to to the next show. So I'm pretty sure that uh, he'll carry the weight pretty well. Well, we we'll, we will see, but we will miss you, and I hope everybody has fun today with Super Bowl and next week and everything else. But with that, I think we're gonna ask um, Mr. Yardley, where can we find you on social media? At militant underscore marker on all platforms. And for me, it is um, Moni Bear on uh, Instagram and Rebel Moni on Twitter. And then I always like to do Christy last because she also has the ones for our, our actual show as well, Miss Christy. We are the Creepin' It Real show across basically everything at, I guess, at Creepin' It, Creepin' underscore It on Twitter. But if you search the Creepin' It Real show, we will come up. And then I am Creepin' Christy on Instagram. Very nice. Keep also, real, everybody. Also, what? real quick, sorry. Uh, we do ask again. Um, we have got oh, yes. some, some responses for reviews. You guys have been great. We actually are showing up on iTunes now. And we just encourage you guys to keep, please keep reviewing us. Uh, preferably good reviews, but whatever. And um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, you know what? I also, I also want to say this real quickly, and I'm going to shoot it right back to you. Uh, as well, one of the things and one of the focuses of this show is for us to provide content that you know, that we actually know that you as our listeners are um, excited about. So if there are any topics you want us to cover or you have any information, you can always go to the Facebook page or send us an email at creepingitrealshow at gmail.com and just let us know what's going on. If you have any stories you want to tell or if there's a TV show, a movie, or something that you think that we should check out to possibly talk about on the podcast, we definitely want the feedback. And if you're the type of person who gives us a sucky review but don't want to tell us the types of things that you're interested in, uh, you get to the middle finger. But, yeah, uh, that's we def- nice. Yeah, we definitely, uh, you know, we definitely appreciate the, the, the feedback and uh, constructive criticism is always great, but we want to form the show around the things that our listeners want. So we definitely want to hear any type of things that you're into and we'll definitely take all emails or all comments on our pages seriously. So for sure. You, and fellow podcasters also, if you want to trade reviews, let us know what your podcast is and we will take a listen and trade reviews as well. We won't just ask something for nothing. So yeah. Um, yeah, sorry I forgot to mention that, guys. But with that, I think 
I think that's everything. And we'll say to you, have a great week. I uh, hope your Super Bowl is full of gluttony and debauchery, but don't do anything we wouldn't do. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye. In your head against my shoulder This world is getting colder I will keep you warm and safe You just need some love and faith So come on, sister Let me love you all that time Welcome on, brother Let me ease your mind, yeah In your head against my shoulder I will be here when it's all over Always we will need each other I do love you, sister and brother